the R Stives. What's up, buddy? Hi, bud. How are you doing? I am fantastic. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I was uh, sick last week. Um, didn't have COVID, but sure felt like COVID. Uh, uh, yeah, I was uh, I was pretty sick boy. Um, all day Saturday and half the day on Sunday. And all of a sudden, the light switch went on, and I was good. So uh, I took Monday kind of easy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm great. I'm great. I was at church uh, yesterday. We we baptized five, and I think Angola baptized twelve. Nice. I'm not sure. Did you all baptize anybody in Hillsdale? We didn't. We um, we were doing every other month because we need to set the baptistry up um, and all of that. But moving forward, we're not doing that anymore. We're going every month, baby. So Come starting on. April, every month that pup's going to be set up, ready to rock and roll. If people want to get in, it's time to go. Yeah, journey. So that 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 brings up a journey class. Um, I'm I'm talking to people about getting into journey. Uh, we. We don't require, but we ask that you go through journey just so that you get a handle on what you're doing and why you're doing, why, why, why baptism answers all those questions. Um, it's a class, it's a four week class uh, during first service. And then uh, second service, you get to come to uh, services and uh, those will not be held next week because journey starts the following week uh the the first the first sunday uh of april so wow. how weird is that to say the first sunday of april what in the world good golly so, what is happening so it's a little different for us up at hillsdale because ah. we don't have a spot to do it for service uh we got the dawn theater and the space next door where our kids world is so for us it's like we don't have there's no room at the end so for us we're going to we've been doing one day journey bonanza and it's it's craziness it's like drinking out of a fire hose man so we're swapping it out in april we're going to start doing it every week just like our other two campuses only we're going to have to do ours after second service so while we're moving stuff out of the dawn i think we're going to have our journey class upstairs in the balcony meeting um so it's it's just one of those fun challenges that when you're a mobile church you just overcome, you know? So it's going to be awesome, man. We can't wait to to be able to do it weekly now, just like our other two campuses and be able to fit in just like everyone else and then jump into baptisms every month. Genuinely excited. This guy's genuinely excited about that. So can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So uh, I know that you're going to talk about invites to Easter. Um, I have uh, one that I'm going to invite this week. I've already let him know that uh, I've been, I'm going to invite him officially. He's already said, I think I'm coming. So that's a good thing. Um, but I want to give a shout out to, uh, Rich and Darla Weaver. And I meant to bring the stuff that they sent the pastors. Uh, there were the, 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 the peeps, the marshmallow oh, yeah. melt in your mouth, not in your hand, uh, peeps. And um, those were in there. There was a couple boxes of those. Those may not reach any other pastor. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Uh, there was some. How that was going to go down? Yeah, there was some uh, honey roasted peanuts, and oh, there was just yeah, there was there was all kinds of stuff in there. Little uh, uh, Hershey's Kisses, and uh, I opened it up, and I thought, what is this? And uh, I opened up the card, and it was from Rich and Darla. So. Thanks, wow. Richard Darla. You are faithful, faithful 714ers. Yeah, I love you guys. Thanks. That's amazing. So uh, I'm not making any promises that uh, the Brock, Brockmeister will get any of that, but uh, I'll, <laughs> Richard, do Darla, I'll send you my address. You can start sending it to me. Look <laughs> at me. This is a face you could trust to hand out candy. You can trust me to get it to them. I promise. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't trust me. I'm telling you right now. I stick something in their mailboxes, and they're here every so often, so they can look in their mailbox and get get stuff. So that's right. I we trust you, buddy. We trust. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. That's super so, sweet. That's invite awesome. Invite for Easter. I mean, are we going to invite anybody, or are we just going to just kind of let it flow? We're on the clock, buddy. Today's Monday. It Easter's is. Easter's come. Hey, we got a service Saturday night. Let's go. 
Saturday night. night. Five o'clock. Let's go. Oh, so the last Saturday night service that we had, it was it was Christmas, I think, right? Yeah. Yep. So we had like 250 people here, and I had several people come up to me and say, see, we should be having Saturday night. I said, yeah, I, I know, but it's a it's a very, very big strain on the staff. And um, so but anyway, well, let's fill yeah. it up on Saturday night and Sunday mornings. Both services, all campuses. Come on, somebody. So I told our volunteers yesterday at church, we did our huddle, all three of our campuses. If you don't know this, if you don't serve at Life Changing, all like our our volunteers every single Sunday do a huddle together before church and we just share some vision and we get pumped up. We say, let's go. It's go time. And I shared at our huddle, you know, a month ago, we all came up with a name of who we were going to be inviting. And Pastor Brock did the same thing as everybody else in that mix. I came up with two names, father and a son that I love very much. And I reached out to them last week. <clears throat> and then after I reached out to them, I thought, well, wait a minute. What about, what about so-and-so? So I reached out to them too. And then I was like, wait a minute, what about so-and-so? So at this point, Pastor Rick, I, I got five on my tally. I got five on my tally board over here. So uh, just saying, it's not a competition because it's really not. Other than I want to make, I want to make heaven crowded. I want to have, I want to have standing room only at Life Changing Church, all three campuses. And I told our Hillsdale people yesterday, and I'm telling all of our life changers, listen to this, listen. Don't invite your church friends. If your friends and family go to that church or that church, let them go to their church. Man. Tell them to invite people to their church as well. Yes. We want to fill up any any church that proclaims the name of Jesus. We want to fill every one of those pups up on Easter, every single one of them, with people that don't know Jesus. So, man, get other people around you hyped. Maybe you have – maybe Pastor Rick has a group of old guys that meet – for coffee in the mornings and oh grumble about gas bro oh, gas prices are oh, mama maybe pastor rick walks in and goes hey how many invite to church this sunday let's go i'll 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 challenge you let's go you know like let's do this because we want to see i told i told hillsdale yesterday our people on sunday morning i told our people we want to see a huge revival of people in the tri-state area turn their feet to jesus and we get to be a part of that so let's go. Saturday and Sunday are coming. We better get at it today. 2024. So I want to give a shout out and a, uh, um, I guess, uh, a, a challenge to our foreign uh, watchers, several of them. So Pastor John Aduri, who is in India, he was sick here just recently, and I think he's still pretty sick. Uh, be praying for him. Uh, but he is an awesome, awesome man. Uh, he's in India. He has lots of people. Pastor Jason Boer got to meet him. And um, so shout out to Pastor John Adori and his family and all the peeps that he gets to minister to. Uh, Pastor Ramish uh, out of Pakistan uh, is jumps on 714 often. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly or not, but uh just another pastor and uh, just an awesome, awesome man. And just uh, uh, a shout out to him and a newfound friend. He's not a pastor, although he was a youth pastor and he's street witnesses. Um, uh, but Kenya is his name. He's he's uh, I don't know if we can attach the pastor's name to him, but he is in uh, Uganda, uh, Africa, uh, and he's been jumping on 714. So. Uh, their time change. Their time differences are uh, uh, seven, nine, and eleven hours, I believe. So Ooh. they're different. They're ahead of us. Uh, but uh, a shout out to each of them, and um, uh, just hoping and praying that their their houses are filled uh, with people who want to know Jesus. So we're spreading the word all across the world. It's uh, it's awesome, and these guys are jumping on seven fourteen listening to two crazy pastors talk about the word, about the truth, and uh, what what we think about it, and uh, reading between the lines, and uh, today is no different. So we're going to we're gonna get into, uh, this is Easter week, so we're jumping Ooh. away from uh, Hebrews, and we're jumping into Luke 
chapter 22, if you want to get ready, Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 53. And I believe Brock's going to be uh, reading, and uh, we're going to we're going to see what the Lord has to say to us about this. And uh, um, we're going to lead right up to uh, the crucifixion and uh, the resurrection and, uh, yeah, life and death and life again. So uh, uh, this is the God that we serve. This is our Savior that we're talking about. So, yeah. Yes, sir. All right. You ready to jump in? I am. Let's do it. Luke chapter 22, uh, just like Pastor Rick said, starting in verse 39, uh, I'll be reading from the NLT. I'm also using my version app, so bonus points for anybody that's on version today. Um, bonus points don't get you anything, it's just cool. Uh, so the heading for mine is Jesus Prays on the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last, he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. Jesus betrayed and arrested. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords. And one of them struck at the high priest slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him. And by some dangerous revolutionary, he asked, that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day, but this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. Wow. Wow, wow. Uh, end at verse 53, right? Yep. Yep, that's it. Okay. That's Good it. deal. Good deal. Yep. So uh, just a couple things that I'll just kick off with, uh, some interesting stuff that I found. Um, he says, then he accompanied, accompanied by the disciples in verse 39, Jesus left the up, upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give into temptation. Uh, something that I found, which is pretty cool, I think, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. That, that's what he was accustomed to do. Jesus is, had, it said that uh, Jesus had spent his night there, nights there during the week. You'll find that in Luke 21, uh, 37. And he refused, Jesus refused to change this routine. Now, I, and I wondered, what, so why, why is that? And um, I mean, he knew why he came. He knew that he was going to be a sacrifice. He knew that it was inevitable unless he chose to go, nope, I'm not doing this. But he knew what he was doing, and uh, he knew what he had to do, and he kept the same routine, even though it meant Judas would easily find him. Jesus had a purpose, and he knew what it was, and he was going to follow through with it, even though he knew the agony ahead of him. So um, Judas could have changed his, his course, his, his mind. But he chose to go through with that, and uh, the evil part of, of Satan uh, influenced him to the point of betraying our Lord and Savior. So just an opening statement for me. What do you got? Um, one of the things that stuck out to me was where, and you pointed it out, it says he went as usual to the Mount of Olives to pray. Um, in your own life, and, and Pastor Rick, I'm actually asking you this, 
in your own life, do you have a usual place of prayer or do you, is your style, you just kind of pray all over the place just as it hits you or um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, for me, um, uh, a usual place uh, and it's a, and it's a bad, we, we've always often said this, don't pray laying down because you often go to sleep, which I enjoy going to sleep as I pray. Uh, and I usually remember where I left off, but many, many times uh, I do a lot of traveling in my truck. I do keep my eyes open and and I pray, I pray as I drive. So, uh, or if someone, and I love to do this, I, I don't, maybe you have seen me, not that I'm trying to make a spectacle of it, but there are people who will come to church. I'm in my office right now. I'm pointing out in the atrium area into the auditorium. Who will say, hey, I, I need prayer for this or I need prayer for that. I'm going through this or I'm going through that. And I said, well, let's just pray then. Let's pray right now. Oh, yeah. So I'll just huddle around them and uh, we'll just start praying. It's a, it's a great thing to pray immediate because then you don't forget. Because I'll pray for you. Sometimes you forget. And I've done that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I don't really have a specific place. It's just wherever, whenever. Uh, as the Lord leads. And I would say me too. Um, I do pray in bed at night. Um, I pray when I drive again with my eyes open uh, pro tip. Um, I pray sitting here in my lounge, in my house. I, I mean, I pray all the time. I'll pray on mile marker five on M 99 on the way up to Hillsdale. I'll pray at Wendy's eating a salad. Like I'll, I'll pray whenever, but one of my favorite places to pray is outside. Uh -huh. I love to pray outside. I just, something about sometimes for me personally, being in a building, I feel almost hindered. And I don't know, I'm going to try to show my phone here. I don't know how well this will work. It might freak out my camera. So we'll, it's a little science experiment. Uh, this is one of my favorite places to pray. Yeah, you can't really see that very oh, well. I can see it. It's a blind. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a shoot house down in Alabama where I go hunting every year. Um, that's one of my favorite things about hunting actually is just being out in the stillness. I can't watch anything on my phone or, or goof around. Uh, you know, I'm not watching a movie or a show because you gotta be paying attention. Something about being able to sit in nature and just look in, in the quiet and being still, that's my favorite time and place to pray. So there's something beautiful to me about the idea that Jesus went up to this Mount on a regular basis you know, this, hey, man, I'm going to go up to this this area, this refuge, this outdoor spot where I just, that's where I go. That's where I love to pray. I could say that my heart kind of aligns with that. I get it. I, I love that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I want to jump to um, uh, where he said, um, pray that you will not give in to temptation. When 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 he said that, when I read this, and I've read those, these these verses before, I thought, now why does he have them pray? I mean, he already knows what's going to happen. He already knows what's going on. Right. Uh, why is he having them to pray uh, so they won't give in to, to temptation? I'm thinking, what temptation? So I looked into a little bit of that, and um, and I and concluded in my own mind, prayer changes everything. It really, really does. So uh, I want to say this. Um, prayer will get you through the most difficult situations you find yourself in. Once again, Jesus went through everything that we go through. He's gone through all the emotions. He's gone through all the situations. He, he's, been, he's been through it all. There isn't anything that we have done or experienced that uh, we've given into where he said, nope. I'm not going to sin. I'm, I'm not going to, he, he might, he gave completely different answers than I would have given. Uh, he did not give in. So uh, here he is, he's saying pray. And, and, and I question why, because prayer makes a difference. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Now, does that mean everything is going to be just hunky dory to coin a phrase? No. No, it's not. It's going to be terrible probably at times. But I'm telling you, the power of prayer will get you through. It'll draw you unto him 
It'll give you a different perspective. It'll give you a different attitude. Uh, even if the outcome is the same as if you wouldn't have prayed, prayer changes you is what happens. And are there miracles because of prayer? Absolutely there are. Um, many people pray uh, for miracles. I know several people right now who have a death sentence as far as a disease is concerned. Their family and many, many friends, those who know them, are praying for a miracle that this cancer, that this disease will be thrown out of them and they'll be just fine. So I say to that, that's that's not bad. That's not bad to pray that. Is God going to answer that? Yes, he is. And it may be, I, you know, it's your time. It's your time to come home. It's your time to stay a while longer. I don't know what the answer to that is, but yeah. I'm telling you, prayer is powerful, and it's a good thing. Always a good thing. Absolutely. And to me, I, I always was, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of fascinated with the scripture, pray that you will not give into temptation. And I'm like, what's he talking about here? Like, what temptation is he is he referring to? And you think like Jesus knows what's about to happen. And we're going to get to that in a second, but he knows what's going to go on here in a minute. And I think he understands that from the enemy's perspective, if you strike down the shepherd, it's going to be a free for all for the sheep. They're just going to run all over the woohoo shepherds down. I'm out, you know, and they're having a sheep holiday running all over everywhere, you know? And I think from Jesus perspective, he understands this ragtag group of goons that he's been hanging out with the last few years they've come a long way don't get me wrong but they're still prone to be incredibly human just like you and me and i think that that's one of the reasons that he's like hey hey hey, don't give in to temptation man you got to stay strong and i feel like for him he might be talking about that very moment but i think he might also be talking about like hey as things are are coming right now do not fall into temptation stand strong man like Basically, I feel like Jesus is like reading between the lines, guys. Stuff's about to go sideways 100 miles per hour, and you need to buckle up. I think that's what Jesus is talking about here. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to continue to jump down. Verse 42. Uh, well, verse 41, he says, he walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will not not your will to be done, not mine. So I want to talk about, um, um, because I, I think it's very, very telling about what Jesus did right here. Uh, he walked away from them and he knelt down. I, here's what I found out. The usual manner of prayer at the time, at that time, was to pray in a standing position. Didn't know that. Jesus knelt down because Jesus knelt down proves the violence of his struggle in Gethsemane and the, and just, just the, the struggle that was taking place. So I, I think that this, uh, um, as Luke, Luke wrote this, is that right? I didn't even check that out. Luke. Yes. So as Luke wrote, I, I think that he was very, very, passionate about writing this i think that he, he was uh he was um uh, very very precise he was an eyewitness uh, one of the disciples was an eyewitness who reported this to luke and and they're telling him exactly what happened in 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 very very minute detail so uh here jesus was he's kneeling down to pray and yet uh, he's breaking tradition. I don't know if it was tradition or not of what they normally did. But again, the 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 struggle that was taking place within him, uh, it was the weight, the weight of the world was on his shoulders. And he knelt down to pray. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, like I'm I've always been so moved by this verse. And a lot of people, th there are a lot of skeptics out there that go, see. Look, Jesus was wanting to bail. He was wanting to get out of this. He wanted to get out of it. And it, um, Did you read it? Yeah, he did. He said, take this cup of suffering from me. 
Go ahead, Lord, take it from me. But what I love about Jesus' prayer here is, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Jesus is saying, God, it's all about what you want. I know your plan, and man, I'm going to honor your plan. But if there's another way around this, this mountain, let's find it. And I think that that, you know, Rick, going back to what you were saying a minute ago, people that get a diagnosis of a terminal illness or, you know, whatever it may be, I feel like that needs to be their prayer. Hey, Lord, if my time is very, very limited here, I'll, I'll drink from that cup. But if I have more time, that'd be that'd be pretty dope, too. But regardless of what it is, you got 15 minutes left on Earth or 15 years, regardless of what it is. We need to be all about doing the will of the Father, just like Jesus was, because yeah. that's what I so love about Jesus. Jesus was like, man, I'm, I'm God's boy. Whatever he wants, I'm in. Let's go. And that needs to be our prayer, even when it's disappointing, even when we don't like the answer, even when it really like literally brings the end of our life. We, we, we want to honor God just like Jesus did. So it's such a such a beautiful, simplistic prayer in my mind. Yeah. So these these couple of verses right here in 41 through uh, to 46, uh, I want to read this. I found this. This is I think this is so good. And, and I don't want to mess it up as I as I read it. Jesus willingly resolved to lay down his life. We know that. The cup did not represent death, but judgment. Jesus was unafraid of death. He was unafraid of death. Jesus became, as it were, an enemy of God, who was judged and forced to drink the cup of the Father's fury, so we would not have to drink of that cup. That's what he did for us. Taking this figurative cup was the source of Jesus' greatest agony on the cross. That's that's what he and then he he went on to say, not my will, but yours be done. It's not about me. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about these people. And uh, what did he say? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, he still loved them, though they were spitting on him. They were, I mean, they were the, the, all the things that had taken place with him. I mean, if anybody had a reason to hate. If anybody had a reason to have revenge in their heart, Jesus did. Yet he did not. He did not. He had nothing but love in his heart. He knew why he came and he fulfilled that promise, which is so wow. That, that is so wow. So at, yeah. at any time in all of this, Jesus could have turned into John Wick with the slick back hair and the all black suit and went all buck wild on everybody. Cutting off ears? Nope. I go more savage than that. Yeah. Jesus could have done that at any moment, but he chose not to. And I think that's what we got to focus on. He chose not to. It was a decision. He decided to be faithful. And there's there's a couple other places in the New Testament where Jesus is like, hey, buddy, nobody takes my life. I, I lay it down. And right. you want to talk about the ultimate flex. This is the ultimate flex. The guy that had all the power at his fingertips, literally, yeah. you know, he could have he could have liquefied that whole group that came here in a little bit to get him in the garden. He could have liquefied all of them. Literally, boop, boop, they're gone. They're like jello. He could have done that, but he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. He prayed and he said, God, whatever you want, I'm your guy and I'm going to be faithful even to the point of being hung on the cross. And I appreciate that. I'm getting a little bit ahead here. The bunny trails are happening. But when you look at crucifixion, it's the most horrific, painful, disgraceful death. Like, I mean, it's horrible. But I guarantee it wasn't the fear of those nails. It wasn't the fear of the humiliation that Jesus was, was weary to face. It was the magnitude of bearing the sins of all mankind no. on his perfect shoulders. Yeah. Like, wow, man, that should move us. That should literally light a fire in your tummy right now, 714ers, to think, Jesus did that for me. Jesus did that for you and everybody else. That that person that you don't like at work, Jesus died for them too. You know, like, it's just so amazing. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead. I'm going to slow down. 
slow down. Okay, back to you, buddy. All right. So I I just want to make one more thing before we jump into uh, 47. Uh, one more. So I talked about Jesus knelt down to pray because the weight of the world was on his shoulders. The, the, the order of the day was to stand and pray. And here in verse 43, it says, then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He was weak. He was weak. Uh, he had prayed more fervently and he was in such agony of spirit that he, his swell, his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Um, so uh, this angel that appeared from heaven to strengthen him, um, I believe Jesus lowered himself lower than the angels. Uh, I believe that he received comfort from this angel that was his servant. And, um, uh, you know, it talked about this. His, pers his per perspiration was so profuse that it was like blood spilling on the ground. Just, wow. I'm just, I, it's just hard to imagine. I, I guess um, the movie that, that we have seen, um, what's the name of the movie? The Passion of the Christ. The Passion of the Christ is probably the closest to the agony of what he went through. And I don't think that holds a candle to it. Um. So no the old the old uh, Charlton Heston movies uh, back in the day, um, I mean, he was barely bloodied, and I believe he was probably so bloody he wasn't even recognizable. Yeah, um, yep. of what took place with him. So um, that's what he was coming under. Um, and and in verse forty six, it says, "Why you know?" He came back. He said, "Why are you sleeping?" He asked, "Get up and pray." so that you will not give in to temptation. Once again, he's talking about that temptation of, of and again, I don't know what temptation he's exactly referring to, um, but um, the master is speaking, and um, they weren't listening well at this point. Well, our merry band of idiots decided to take a nap. Like, what are you doing, man? He said, keep watch, stay vigilant. You know, pay hey, hey, boys, pay attention here. But just like you and I would have, we're, we're human, we get distracted, they fell asleep. And yeah. Jesus is like, hey, hey, get up and pray. I've always thought verse 43 is interesting, by the way. An angel appeared and strengthened, what is that, strengthened him. Yeah. Like, did, the, did an angel come down and go, here, drink this Jack Black Rifle espresso drink, and let's go. And Jesus is like, woo! I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's the route on that one. No. Uh, but when you think about it, like, Again, I think it's so cool remembering Jesus is fully God, yet fully man, and this angel comes to strengthen him. I don't know what that looks like. Maybe, maybe the angel's like, hey, buddy, let me pray with you. Maybe the angel like, hey, high five, you got this, let's go. I, I don't know what that looks like, but how beautiful is it that an angel comes to him, strengthens him, and it says in 44, he prayed more fervently, and then that's when the blood fell from his brow. Um, you know, if, if you look at uh, scientific manuals and all that stuff, it will say like in extreme duress like that, it is possible for the little capillaries and everything on your forehead to, to rupture and literally for you to sweat blood, which I just find that fascinating. I've been pretty stressed out in my life, but I've never carried that kind of weight on my shoulders, you know? So, um, yeah, just a couple thoughts on that. Yeah. So the eyewitness account of this uh, and just something that just hit me. Um, evidently this angel did not speak or we didn't announce himself, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm Gabriel or I'm Michael. Um, uh, but yep. there, and, and, and I found it interesting that just one angel came, mm -hmm. one angel. it just says an angel came from heaven and appeared to strengthen him. Um, w what took place there? I mean, we really, really don't know, but this is an eyewitness account of what is taking place with Jesus as he is being prepared um, for the cross. So, cool. Absolutely. Uh, jumping uh, to verse, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to jump to verse 48. Said, yep. Jesus, would, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? I just found it interesting. Um, I'm a hugger. 
and I I love to hug men and women. Um, I just love to hug people and just embrace them and just uh, love them. And uh, back in the day, in Jesus' day, uh, the order of the day was a holy kiss. Uh, it was a traditional greeting for them. Um, and uh, Jesus is talking to Judas right here. Would you betray the Son of Man with a with with a which an with an actual greeting, somewhat something that you would greet and we would love each other with? And obviously, the answer was, yeah, that's exactly what he did. So I just found that just an interesting uh, concept, interesting thought. Well, and how cool is it that remember? Jesus has prophesied this about himself, that he will be betrayed by one in this room with a kiss. And how how crazy is that where you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes Judas with all these guys with torches. And Judas has got that crazy look in his eye. And now Jesus is saying, "Are you? oh, no, it's Judas. You know, like that dun, dun, dun moment where you're like, I totally understand getting up and wanting to hack a dude's ear off in this moment because you're like, what the heck, man? How are you going to betray Jesus? Come on, man. What's going through your mind? Um, but obviously we know that Judas was being used by the enemy in this moment. Just jumping ahead a little bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, here we are. Um, Judas is is coming, going to betray them with betray him with a kiss. The other disciples, uh, uh, they saw what was about to happen, it says. And they ask, I love, I love that they ask this question. <laughs> Me too. Should we fight. I love that they asked that. They were they were no. in defense, defensive mode for me. Uh, but before he could even answer them, before you know, peace be with you, or whatever he would have said. I mean, somebody cuts off one of the one of the um uh, slaves, high, high priest slave's ear. Yeah, an ear. And so just bringing that all together uh, in verse 51, but Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. What was that guy thinking? No doubt, man. Yeah. What was he thinking? <laughs> I mean, there's blood all over him. I mean, when you cut part of the head, I mean, you bleed, buddy. You really bleed. Yep. And I mean, to cut off an ear, I, he bled. Big time. Dude, yeah, no joke. He's got blood all over him, and Jesus replaces it. I mean, he's probably going, he probably fell up there and felt the ear was gone. And then Jesus, how, however he done that, touched him, put the ear back, and it was healed. And he's going, there's no, there's no, there's no blood now. What, what? I mean, he, he had to know. He had to know. And those who witnessed had yes. to know. Yep. Something well, is special about this man, this Messiah. Well, I believe it's a couple of the Gospels where it says Peter was the one that pulled out the sword and did that. Yeah. So Peter is either incredibly good with a sword that you're able to cut a dude's ear off, or he's really, really bad with a sword. Yeah. One of the two things going down That's there. The point. But, but I absolutely love, though, that you know, Peter's initial reaction is, no, Jesus, I'm not going to let this go down. I got your back. I'm going to fight. And pulls a sword, lobs the poor dude's ear off. Um, and Jesus goes, ah, no more. Nope, we're not doing this. And he touches it. He heals it. And then I, I wonder if, like, at what moment for the disciples did the light bulb go on? Like, Oh, yeah, he was just talking about all this, remember? Oh, yep, yep. He was talking about being betrayed and being handed over, and oh, that's right. Like, how, like at what point does the light bulb go on for these guys, you know? Because yeah. I appreciate that sometimes we as humans are so dense. The writing's on the wall right in front of us, and we're still, whoa, whoa, like, we still don't see it. And I love that even the disciples who are right there with Jesus, man, they're very human. And yeah. Jesus still uses ordinary, everyday doofuses to accomplish his perfect will. So a little, little side note there. Yeah. So just talking a little bit about that, you know, jumping down into 52 and the rest of what we have read, Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guard, 
and elders who had come for him. I mean, and he and he and he's really talking very, very plain sense to them. Am I some some dangerous revolutionary? I mean, if I pulled a gun on you, did I do this? Did I do that? Um, that you would come with swords and clubs to arrest me? I mean, I'm going to go peacefully with you. Although a guy's uh, ear did get cut off, I will say that. Um, so he asked them, why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. Um, but this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. And it was, and again, uh, I think this is very, very significant, the darkness. That's where Satan does his work, in the shadows. Yep. That's where he doesn't do it out in the open of light. Although, that's becoming more and more that way. I mean, um, they're not. A, he's not afraid of anything, it seems like, anymore. He knows his time is short. But, um, you know, here it is, uh, the power of the darkness reigns, and um Jesus um uh, is just confronting them with truth once again but his disciples who were around once again um even though he has spent much much time with them the fear of man still reigns the fear of man uh, that that guy can hurt me you know when you can't see something you don't know that it can hurt you or help you uh, the fear of man is so evident right here within this display of power by by Satan. So, um, just just something again, just interesting to me. Yeah, and to me, I just I, I read this account, and a it breaks my heart that Jesus had to endure that. I mean, you think of anybody um, that you know this this perfect guy that lived this perfect life. Um, that had to go through this. It's just terrible. But um, you think about though, like just his faithfulness and his willingness just to love. And even he didn't have to fix the dude's ear. Like think about that for a second too. He could have just left the ear on the ground and been like, all right, let's go do this. We got to do what we got to do. But even in that moment, he chose compassion and servitude as he, you know, fixed the ear. So even in that, even in this moment where Jesus is being handed over in this moment of darkness, He's still so good. And I think that's one of those things that for us, um, you know, I, I, I tend to make things super practical to where we're at now. You know, as the storms of life are bashing against the shores of our mental health and our lives and all that stuff, I think it's just so important for us to remember, man, even when it feels like we're destroyed or defeated or whatever, he's still good. Amen. You know, so um, what a what a beautiful display of just absolute power and servitude by Jesus on this part. It's just beautiful, man. So one of my hopes for the 714 uh, viewers, as we read the scripture, my prayer is that it would come alive to each one of us. Absolutely. When I read this, it came alive to me. I... I wanted to read in between the lines. I wanted to to try to understand it a little bit better. That's why I, I love to study it and to get into the nuts and bolts of it. I want to know how Jesus felt. I want to know how Peter felt. I want to know how this guard felt when his ear fell to the ground. Um, all those things. And, and again, I want to know how the disciples felt, uh, the fear that was in them, even though the King of Kings was standing right there in their midst, they had fear. Uh, that will be no more when he comes back. Absolutely. He's not coming back as a lamb. He's coming back as a lion this time. Absolutely. And coming back to reign and reign uh, perfectly uh, and to claim his own, which um, a, a week from now, because I had forgotten that we were going to do uh, the Easter week uh, in in Luke. And I read ahead in Hebrews. He, we're going to go back to Hebrews 8 after the Easter uh, weekend throughout all this week. Hebrews 8 is an amazing, amazing chapter. Uh, I can't wait to discuss it um, because it has, has given me some freedom. So you might want to read ahead to... Hebrews 8, 
But uh, for today, thank you for allowing us to share Luke 22 with you. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow to uh, continue to share, uh, leading all the way up to uh, his crucifixion, uh, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, sitting on the right hand of God the Father. There, I gave it all away right there. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Hey, you want me to pray us out? Yes, would you? That'd be, be awesome. Happy. Come on, Let's bro. do it. God, thank you so much for your word, man. It's just so amazing to be able to read this account of what happened. And it's so amazing that Jesus laid his life for us and for so many others. So, Lord, I ask that during this season particularly, but every day, God, that we are mindful of how good you are and what you sent for us in your son. Uh, God, help us um, this week to be bold and yet humble to invite people to church. And even if somebody says, hey, life-changing church isn't my thing, that's okay. Go to another church. We can invite other people to other churches this Easter season because, God, we're working for you. We are trying to build up that kingdom, not just build castles. Uh, so, Lord, help us. Make us bold in you. And, uh, Father, just bless our 714ers. Let them have an amazing Monday and get after it today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I don't know if we uh, concluded uh, the baptisms, but I think we probably had 19 or 20 that uh, was baptized. Uh, maybe it was only 17. Uh, I don't know, but we, we uh, heaven celebrated each and every one of these baptisms that took place. And God knows who was baptized today, even if I don't know the number. So pretty cool to belong to a church where we're proclaiming um, the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, showing an outward expression of who we are, of the inward change within each one of us. So it's incredible, man. I love it. Very, very cool. All yeah. right. Sweet spot of life, buddy. I'm telling you. Yeah. 714 tomorrow on Tuesday, same time, same station. Uh, would love for you to be here. Uh, share this up, continue to share, continue to talk up 714. I really want to hit 70 sometime. Uh, we've never been over 70. Uh, we've been, uh, I think, at 68 and would love to get to 70 just because. Well, 714ers, how about this? Next Monday is the day because Pastor Rick and I are all about breaking those uh, boundaries down. We're, uh, we're trendsetters, some would call us. Um, you know, we're influencers, as uh, Craig Rochelle would share yesterday, yesterday's message. So uh, you help us be influencers, and we're going to get to 75 next Monday, buddy. Let's just Come do on. it. We're going to speak on. it now. Let's do it. It'll be great. It'll be great. Blessings. Be him if we do. Yes. Yes. Blessings. Have a great, great week, and happy Easter to each of you.